Let's move on to the question number two, part A. In mammals, the blood glucose concentration must be maintained within narrow limits so that the body cells can function efficiently. Name the mechanism by which the blood glucose concentration is maintained within narrow limits. So guys, we all know that in our body, homeostasis is going on and homeostasis uh, is basically the maintenance of constant internal environment. So all the physiological factors of the internal environment are maintained to a constant value. For example, the water potential of blood is maintained to a constant value. Uh, glucose concentration is maintained uh, to a constant value. Uh, temperature of the blood is maintained to a constant value. So the mechanism by which uh, homeostasis is brought about or the mechanism by which uh, different physiological factors of the internal environment are maintained, that mechanism is known as negative feedback. Over here, you can uh, also write homeostasis, right? So in the answer, the best answer should be negative feedback because they're asking about the mechanism. You can also write homeostasis because homeostasis is also the maintenance of constant internal environment and simply it's also a mechanism, right? Part B. Glucagon is released by the alpha cells of the pancreas when the blood glucose concentration decreases below the set point. So guys, we all know that uh, glucagon is released when glucose is gone. So what I tell my students is that whenever uh, the blood glucose concentration falls or whenever glucose is gone, right, glucagon is released. So we all know that it's uh, secreted by alpha cells. Glucagon is released by alpha cells of the pancreas when the blood glucose concentration decreases below the set point. Figure 6.1 outlines the response of the liver cells to glucagon. Okay, guys, as we all know that glucagon is a hormone and uh, uh, basically this uh, figure 6.1 illustrates the response of the liver cells to the glucagon. Basically, this shows the cell signaling uh, of the glucagon. If we recall the cell signaling of the glucagon, uh, glucagon binds to its uh, receptor and the receptor changes shape as the receptor changes shape uh, the receptor is coupled with a protein called G protein and this is an intracellular protein so guys as the glucagon binds to the receptor the receptor changes shape receptor causes the activation of G protein and then G protein in turn activates a membrane enzyme and over here this enzyme is known as adenylyl cyclase if you guys remember right and what adenylyl cyclase does that it converts atp into cyclic amp which is the second messenger right so atp is converted into cyclic amp by the membrane enzyme known as adenylyl cyclase and then you know the cyclic amp activates the kinase enzymes which further activates an enzyme cascade so guys, what is meant by enzyme cascade? There are a series of enzymes which are activated. So cyclic AMP activates a protein kinase enzyme and uh, this protein kinase enzyme activates several enzymes in the series. For example, uh, this uh, protein kinase enzyme will activate, for example, enzyme A uh, via what? Via phosphorylation. And then Enzyme A will activate enzyme B, enzyme B will activate enzyme C, enzyme C will activate enzyme D, for example. And then eventually uh, the last enzyme in the cascade will be activated and this will be glycogen phosphorylase. And you know that glycogen phosphorylase, what it do, what it does, basically it breaks down glycogen into glucose, right? So the glycogen phosphorylase, what it does, it breaks down glycogen into glucose which is known as glycogenolysis if you guys remember right okay let's solve the question state how glucagon reaches the liver cells so guys glucagon as we all know is a hormone and hormones are released into the blood and they're transported in blood to their target organs the target cell of the glucagon is liver cell and glucagon reaches the liver cells via blood with reference to uh, figure 6.1, name enzyme A and the second messenger B. So guys, we have already named it. The enzyme A is adenylyl cyclase. And what about the second messenger B? It's cyclic AMP. 
let's move on to the next part state the role of enzyme cascade so guys what is the role of enzyme cascade enzyme cascade causes amplification if you guys remember we discussed this in the class that the enzyme cascade what is the purpose of the enzyme cascade it causes amplification what is meant by amplification for example this is the protein kinase a for example uh, if one cyclic amp molecule um, activates one uh, kinase enzyme this one kinase enzyme can activate maybe 10 a enzymes 10 a enzymes can activate 20 b enzymes for example 20 b enzymes can activate 100 c enzymes 100 c enzymes maybe can activate 500 d enzymes and 500 d enzymes may activate 1000 uh, glycogen phosphorylase enzymes so basically cascade results in the amplification you know that one enzyme can activate many enzymes and many enzymes can activate even further more enzymes right so um, the purpose of the enzyme cascade is to cause amplification state the function of final enzyme in the pathway that is glycogen phosphorylase you all know that it causes or we can say catalyzes the breakdown of what catalyzes the breakdown of glycogen catalyzes the breakdown of glycogen to glucose that is glycogenolysis right glycogen to glucose all right a biosensor is used to measure blood glucose concentration to check that it is within the normal range describe how a glucose biosensor works so guys uh, you all know that uh, glucose biosensor is basically a gluconometer and uh, how does it work let's discuss as we all know that uh, the biosensor uh, requires a strip or a pad which is inserted into the biosensor and at one end of that strip is a pad onto which the blood drop is placed so let's write and discuss it so we will start from that blood drop is placed on to the pad placed onto the pad of the strip inserted into the biosensor into the bio into the biosensor or glucometer right then what happens the pad contains which enzyme the pad contains glucose oxidase the pad contains the enzyme glucose oxidase and what glucose oxidase does is that glucose oxidase breaks down glucose oxidase converts or breaks down we can say glucose into what it's better to write that glucose oxidase oxidizes glucose into um, gluconic acid gluconic acid and hydrogen peroxide right hydrogen peroxide this is what the uh, glucose oxidase does right and what happens next is that hydrogens are, hydrogen ions are released hydrogen ions are released f from what from gluconic acid because this is an acid and it releases hydrogen ions which generates what which generates an electric current which generates an electric current and you all know that the electric current is proportional to what the electric current is proportional to the glucose concentration the electric current is proportional is proportional to the glucose concentration because you all know that um, greater the glucose concentration in the blood what will happen the greater the glucose concentration in the blood drop that we have placed on to the pad um, 
more oxidation of glucose will occur and more gluconic acid will be formed and more hydrogen ions will be released so uh, more electric current will be produced so the electric current is proportional to the glucose concentration and lastly uh, the current is picked up by the electrodes the current is picked up by an electrode and you know that the reading is uh, or we can say reading appears on the screen the current is picked up by an electrode and the reading or we can say digital reading appears on the screen appears on the screen so guys we are done with question number two now we will move on to the next question